So this this poem uh, was written during the uh, 70s, but it, again, it's an escape into a kind of freedom. Oysters. Our shells clacked on the plates. My tongue was a filling estuary. My palate hung with starlight. As I tasted the salty Pleiades, Orion dipped his foot into the water. Alive and violated, they lay on their beds of ice. Bivalves, the split bulb and philandering sigh of ocean, millions of them ripped and shocked and scattered. We had driven to that coast through flowers and limestone, and there we were, toasting friendship, laying down a perfect memory in the cool of thatch and crockery. Over the Alps, packed deep in hay and snow, the Romans hauled their oysters south to Rome. I saw damp panniers disgorge the frond-lipped, brine-stung glut of privilege, and was angry that my trust could not repose in the clear light, like poetry or freedom leaning in from sea. I ate the day deliberately, that its tang might quicken me all into verb, pure verb. Um, as I say, a lot of friends here, a lot of happy times, and since I'm doing advertising for Morans, I should mention <laughs> up the road in Ballina Hinch Castle. To get to it, you have to pass Ballina Hinch Lake. And uh, that sea light, again, or a brilliant morning, I just asked to be commemorated. So this is called Ballina Hinch Lake. And the birds are a kind of, birds appear in the middle of it flying up, big birds. Uh, in the back of the mind is a famous story about a little bird flying through an Anglo-Saxon hall. And this was the image of the soul coming in to light and going out again into the dark. Ballina Hinch Lake. So we stopped and parked in the spring cleaning light of Connemara on a Sunday morning as a captivating brightness held and opened and the utter mountain mirrored in the lake entered us like a wedge knocked sweetly home into core timber. Not too far away, but far enough for their rumpus not to carry, a pair of water birds splashed up and down and on and on. Next thing, their strong white flecks that could have been excitement or the death throes turned into liftoff, big sure sweeps and dips above the water, no rafter skimming souls translating in and out of the house of life, but air heavers, far heavier than the air. Yet something in us had unhoused itself at the sight of them, so that when she bent to turn the key, she only half turned it and spoke, as it were, directly to the windscreen, in profile and in thought, the wheel at arm's length, averring that, yes, this time indeed, it had been useful to stop. Then inclined her driver's brow, which shook a little as the ignition fired. <laughs> 